say that she was murdered? Do you say that they had to do a blood test to see if her head matched the body? Hey, Dad, just calling to see where you and Mom are, if you're coming. Worst case, they come on Friday and everyone goes home and has a really nice break. After all, we can't let you live here. But you know about the sisters, don't you? They worship the devil. Catherine. Is there something wrong? Why are you doing this? Do you believe in God, Joan? Ever tried to look for him? I look for him in the unlikely things that happen. Little coincidences. funny. You smiled a little. Funny? No. Why? I mean, I just wish you could stay and see my performance. That's all. Keep it going. I think we are all back there getting chills from that trailer. I mean, you know, if you've seen this film, you respond to the footage. I mean, even if you haven't, I think you do. Um, Osgood or Oz? What do you like? What do you prefer? Whatever you like today. Okay. Whatever you're feeling today. Let's go with Oz. I like Oz. Let's do That's it. That's nice. Um, so, where did you come up with the concept for this script? I mean, it's it's haunting. It's crazy. Um, I, anybody who writes. Anything, and I presume people in this room here, write, certainly people watching who write things, you know, you just kind of got to dive in and start. And like a crossword puzzle, you're just looking for two across mm -hmm. so you can get seven down. <laughs> so I wanted to, you know, I wanted to make a movie about a, a, a you know, sort of a sad portrait of a vulnerable girl. And so I found, a, a, you know, I went and sat down. It became a, a, a boarding school, a girls' boarding school over a winter break when no one's around. Sort of the two of them are there by themselves. And once you have, it's silly to say, but once you have that piece of the puzzle, then you just start to drop in the other pieces, man. And when, when you you're, have 100 pages and you're, you feel good. And when you're describing it to friends and family, are they like, that's, that's brilliant? Or are they like, what does that look like? I don't describe anything to anybody until it's all done, honestly. Like, I, to, to other interference and, sa and people's, oh, well, did you consider this? Like, all that kind of stuff, I can't handle it. Yeah. So when it's all finished, then it's time to present it. Um, but I spend all the time with it by myself. I don't let anybody know what I'm doing. Yeah. Smart, and you got one heck of a Smart cast and creepy. here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you have one heck of a cast here. I mean, can you tell me how you find these guys and then how you guys respond to material? So I think... First Oz. Where did you find us? Where did I? Where Where did you get us? <laughs> Online. Where do you guys come from? Where do they make these Amazon. casting? Yeah, where do they make y'all? Uh, <laughs> um, we thought Emma was going to be great for this movie. It turned out she was really great for this movie. And um, so you just, you know, you give her the script. You get the script to her agent, and then her agent says, eh, "I guess so," and passes it on. And Emma read it like, and the same week we spoke on the phone. Because Emma was upset by the screenplay. Which is... <laughs> no, I mean I got I got sent um, I got sent the script and and I and I read it immediately in one sitting and I couldn't put it down. Uh, I was in New Orleans actually filming at the time American Horror Story and uh, so I was in that kind of mindset and uh, and you know I I loved it. I thought it was uh, it was scary, but it was so beautiful. The way it was written was almost like a novel. And it was just so beautiful, and, and I wanted to do it. And so I, I went on with the rest of my day. And then that night at 3 in the morning, I woke up in, like, a sweat, just terrified from having read that. And I was like, wow, if uh, I could put that down and let the whole evening go by and then wake up out of a dead sleep terrified, I think there might be something here. <laughs> um, so, I, uh, so I was like, yeah, I want to do this. And, oh, go ahead. and what was it about the character Joan that you, you, you sort of allianced with? I, I mean... I, 
I, I, of course I love the character, but I have to say it was really the script as a whole that I loved, like how, how everything fit together and how it was almost like this weird, scary, beautiful dance, um, the story is. And, and you'll see what I mean when, when you see the movie. Um, yeah, it's, it's, and it's one of those movies that you'll, you'll want to watch two or three times to really figure out and maybe even more. <laughs> Absolutely. How about you, Kiernan? Yeah, I read this also kind of while I was filming something, and I hadn't felt that enchanted or enthralled with a script in a really long time. And I just thought that it was really beautiful. And I chatted with Oz over the phone, and then I, it was one of those moments where once you talk to Oz, you know it's gonna be good. You're like, okay, I got it. This is a great script, and also this is a great director, and it's gonna be great. And after that, I was just, I was confident, I was convinced, and then I knew Lucy and Emma were involved too, and that just, that just made it all the better. Yeah. And, and Catherine, what did you like about the character? I mean, she's a little creepy, uh, not gonna lie, which I kind of dug just a little bit um, at certain times. Uh, and I thought that, that tapping into that was something that I'd never done before. Um, I'd never played someone who, who felt like she was not alone. <laughs> and uh, and uh, that, was, uh, that was an appealing challenge. And then Lucy, yes. Um, well, I've never been a huge fan of horror films. I've always kind of avoided them at all costs. And so, and you kind of read all of these scripts or see all these horror films that are designed purely to scare the audience, purely to make you jump or kind of freak you out, disgust you. And so to read a script like this, which is completely horrific and traumatizing, but so much more than that, like you really feel for the characters and it's kind of devastating. It's much more a film about grief and loss and the vulnerable place that that leaves you while using horror as a kind of vehicle to drive that. So it was fascinating and... Yeah, yeah I, I completely agree. I think it's more than a horror film for sure. And for you, Oz, I mean, you know, coming from the family that you do, you know, your father doing Psycho, for those who don't know, um, you know, what was it like growing up in that? Were you always thinking about those kind of movies? How early did you see Psycho? I have to know. Um, I didn't, I didn't, it was sort of one of those things where it's like, I, I don't know, I guess I was just having my regular childhood, and so, like, it wasn't like, tonight's the night we screen the movie. You know? For the children. Yeah, the five-year-olds. <laughs> Gather round, kids, tonight's the night. Uh, and I just sort of was uh, watching other shit. You know, I was watching The Wizard of Oz, and I was watching Dumbo, and you know what I mean? Like, so it's not like, it's Psycho Night. Um, so I never, uh, you know, we didn't, it, also my old man was not the type, we didn't, we didn't, you know, it wasn't like conversation piece around, around the house. But, you know, he didn't wake up in the morning, in case you guys forgot. Um, let me remind you of my credits. Uh, so I didn't see the movie until I was like 13 or something, which I feel like pretty appropriate, you know? Like, and, he, and even then, like, he, just because it was my dad's thing and it's a sort of, not sort of, it's this cultural sort of touchstone, um, still when you're 12, man, it's just an old movie. Yeah. It's like an old black and white movie. Now, of course, it's not, you know, for me, obviously, it's a profound thing. But as a child, you're not exactly, like, jumping at it. Yeah. Is it true that you actually had a little role in Psycho 2? Do you remember that? Do you remember being on that set? I do, yeah. <laughs> uh, that was Psycho 2 when I was about eight years old. And there's a bit at the beginning when Norman comes back from court. Like, they've let him out. Mm. Like, that's the premise of the first movie. It's like, you've, you're fine now. Uh, you can go and do more of what you were up to. Uh, you can finish your work. Um, and so he comes home and he has sort of a flashback where he remembers the, uh, the, the day he killed his mom. Yeah. And so uh, they brought me in to do that and uh, dressed me up like him in the costume. And so uh, it was scary, man. It was scary. I mean, I was eight and the sets were really real and dark. And, you know, you guys can all go rent it or something. Yeah. I think you guys should. If you haven't seen Psycho, I wouldn't Psycho yeah, too. I didn't then, know that, that, that little tidbit. That we're all learning something about Maybe everybody. I'd scoop today. True stories. <laughs> um, but, you know, talking about the gore and the blood when you were on set, I mean, it's, you know, these days it's improved. You know, things are really, like, they look real. You know, and, and watching this movie, it was, it's pretty visceral what happens. We're not spoiling anything. There's some blood that occurs. How was it for you guys? I mean, I know you don't really love horror films, but acting around... 
the fake uh, blood and gore and everything like that. I mean, not to spoil much, but it was on me. So <laughs> it was it was sticky. <laughs> like it was very. It's a molass. It's some sort of molassesy thing that's just really sticky. Uh, that's how that's how I describe it. So I just I when I think I like I get this nostalgic feeling of wearing sweatpants with like a bunch of just stickiness on them. The best thing was also when you go into the makeup room and they were, I think, deciding with you the color of the blood that they wanted. And they were like, do you want a more like veiny purple or like a dark, like red, maroony blood? How thick do you want it? And it's just kind of like paling in the corner. Like, How about you, Emma? You have a scene where you're very calm yeah. about the... Yeah. Well, I mean... Uh, I, yeah, I was kind of used to it from American Horror Story because l- literally it would just dump blood on us. And uh, and then we'd have to keep it on us for like 12 hours and same in this because for continuity, like you can't match the little splatter. So we just keep it on all day. Like we wouldn't wipe it off at any point. Like until going we were, into town, until like grabbing we burritos wrapped. and people. Well, I was going to say, I knew it was weird. It's when like my friends would FaceTime me and I'm on set and I'm like, hey, what's up? And then I realized I have like full blood spatter <laughs> all over me. And they're like, are you okay? I'm like, what? And completely forget so it becomes it becomes normal which I think is probably the most disturbing part of it all that like you know you're it all just seems like part of the job when then when you see out of context you're like that's kind of insane that that was my life today uh, yeah. that's hilarious and, and Oz do you find yourself like behind the camera like more blood get, you know throw stuff uh, um, no, I mean, we tried to, I mean, I try, I, there, look, there's some gruesome bits in the movie, but we tried to downplay, you know, I, it was, it's not a splatter movie, it's not a slasher movie, it really is sort of a humanistic movie, so we only used the blood when, when we had to, and because it, it was my first movie, and everything was new to me, and it, the makeup people were, were, were good, and they were great, but for most of the time, we got one chance at everything, you know, like, that, that was the reality of us, like, I don't know how it is when they make, you know, Thor, how many times they get to do the thing, but a lot. And we got to do everything one time, basically, because when we were shooting with Emma in one of the blood splatter scenes, it's legitimately minus 35 degrees. But, like, legitimately. Like, I'm not... Like, really. And we're in a car that's not really heated, and we have one shot to get blood to splash on her face. We got one time. Because you can't clean it up, and it's going to freeze on her face, and blah, blah, blah. It's freezing on my face. Um, and and it was it was hurting so bad, and I was like, "Is this normal? Am I okay? I'm I'm from California. I don't know this these weather conditions." And I'm saying to my producers, "I think Emma Roberts' face is like worth a lot of money <laughs> to like so Revlon and there. people like they own it partially. FX owns it. Yes, um, you know it's definitely it's cold in Canada. You know, but did you guys get a chance to hang out? I know in the movie you guys don't do a lot of scenes together until you know the first time we were yeah. the three of us girls were in the same room together was last night. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah, because we shot Emma's. The three part, of us have the, the yeah. three of us have not all been together other than uh, last night was the first time, and uh, and I did that thing where because I I think I know Lucy so well just from seeing her face I like hugged her and greeted her like she was an old friend and realized that we had never in fact <laughs> met. <laughs> never touched. Never touched. <laughs> yeah, what did you guys feel? About. You guys, you guys spent some time together. Oh, while we you shot all our together scenes stuff. separately because we hated each other so much. It was <laughs> awful. They had to do it. A stuffed animal off camera. Different bits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's that's a surreal experience. You get to you know watch something play out. I mean, when you guys were at the you know the film festival in Toronto, I mean that's huge to have it play out on a big screen. You know, what was that like for you to see it with the, mu- the music, you know, the sound effects, all that sort of thing for you, Oz? First, yeah, uh, yeah. Again, like I said, it was my first movie, and y- you know, everybody knows you sort of write a movie and then you shoot it, and when you shoot your movie, you kill this like the script is all of a sudden no longer relevant, and then you and then you shoot the movie and then you got to cut it, and what you've shot is sort of strangely not relevant anymore. You've got to make the best of it. And I really had a hard time with this movie. I had a hard time watching it and liking it for the longest time, and it wasn't until we laid the music in and the sound and everything that I sort of, I was like, ah, hey, this is tolerable to me. And then we took it to, to the Toronto Film Festival. The reception was excellent, and since then we've just been sort of happy about it. Absolutely. And how do you guys feel watching it for the first time with the music, the effects, everything like that? It's really surprisingly scary. And that's the thing, like, you think once you've done everything, that all the behind the scenes horror, you're kind of cured of all horror film scares from now on. But even watching this, I'm like, what is going to happen? It's like, it's me walking down the corridor. And still, yeah. So well done. 
And, Thanks. Yeah, and Emma, I mean, you obviously love this fair, you know, doing Scream Queens, American Horror Story. Yeah, you have some fans out there. You guys can applaud for yeah, Scream Queens, yeah. Thank you, guys. Do you, do you watch those episodes? Do you watch this movie? Do you enjoy, you know, watching the horrors that you're a part of just as much as... Yeah, of yeah. course. I mean, I was... First of all, I was, like, the biggest American Horror Story fan before I went on the show, and I, I was I was jumping up and down when they asked me to be on that because I was a fan. And then, um, you know, to then do Scream Queens was so fun, and, and, I, and I love watching it, and I loved watching, watching this movie because it's so different being there and, and filming it, and everything's out of order. You don't even get to meet some of your castmates um and then to see how um how everything is woven together and how everything turned out and you know because being in front of the camera like you don't really know what things are going to look like so it's it's amazing to see how everyone has made it all make sense and made it look beautiful and made it you know what you guys are going to see so I, I i'm i'm such a fan as well as as an actor so to, it's so fun to me yeah. Yeah. Amazing. And how about you, Karen? I mean, obviously you were part of Mad Men for so long and people are so familiar with that character. Absolutely. Yeah. People still miss that series. I'm sure you get approached all the time about people who are so sad that that show ended. Yeah, I'm sad too, man. Totally. Um, it's, it's great. It's, it's nice. It's, it's one of the cool things about our job is that once you make the work, it doesn't just disappear. Yeah. It stays with people, which is, you know, awesome. And did you like diving into this genre and, you know, horror film? Yeah, it was oh, yeah. super fun. It was definitely, um, it was right, it was within six months. Of, uh, it was like within that six month period of just having wrapped Mad Men. And I was kind of like, wh who am I if I don't, you know, <laughs> if I'm not on Mad Men? I've been on it since I was six and I'm, you know, 15 now. What, what do I do? Um, so it was kind of a great thing to do in that kind of transitional period because it felt like a new chapter and a really great experience. Can you share like one story about growing up on a set with John Hamm, who seems so hilarious on Saturday Night Live great. and everything like that? Yeah, yeah, no, we got, I mean, we're like words with friends. We played a lot, <laughs> to be quite honest. I think that's something that everyone always finds funny. It's like we got very competitive with <laughs> words with friends and just. Who's little, winning right now? Not, in the, we're not in the game right now, <laughs> but it was just his birthday, but I saw him. Yeah. yeah that's nice. How about you, Lucy? How'd you like, how you like playing, like you said, horror films, watching a horror film, you know, were you as affected as you thought you would be or more affected by the, by the film? Um, yeah, I guess more affected in a way because rather than, I was just excited to be, like I said, part of the behind the scenes of creating that fear mm. and what it takes to kind of put one and two together to create the fear in the audience. Mm. Um, but it's actually terrifying to film as well, and especially when you have a script like this, like I said, where it's so much more than just the efforts to scare people, it's also just feeling the characters so much and, and feeling everything that they're going through, so it was, yeah, very profound and terrifying. Yeah, nice. And Oz, I mean, do you already have that second idea brewing? I mean, what's what's coming I've already up? made two movies, man. Yeah, 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 yeah there's yeah, a movie yeah, yeah, there's yeah, a exactly, movie on Netflix yes. that you can watch um, that I got to that I got to do right after this movie. It's strange. This is the first movie I made and then it's coming out second or whatever. Uh, there's a movie on Netflix that I made for Netflix called I'm the Pretty Thing That Lives in the House with Ruth Wilson, who's on the uh, affair mm -hmm. and Luther, she's quite great. And that's sort of sort of a ghost story. In the same way that this is sort of a demonic possession movie, it's sort of a ghost story. That's kind of my thing. I do the guy the sword of the thing. Um, but yeah, I'm working on things all the time, man, but I can't tell you about that. <laughs> I told you. I don't tell people. This, this genre stuff. stuff, though, you love the horror, obviously. Um, I think I've I've done it okay. The, yeah. you, we're just practicing, right? Like, we're all just, I, I could, for myself, these ladies have all been doing what they, what they do since they were little kids. Um, but for me, this movie's my first movie, and then I made another one. I get to make, a, hopefully, a third. And I'm just practicing. I'm just figuring out what it is. And so, like, it's just what comes out of me. And so, so far, it's been horror movies. This next one is not really a horror movie. Um, I don't think of myself as a horror guy. So I'll t we'll see what happens, man. Um, I love that sweater, by the way. I just had to call out that that tiger. I can't. You know something? It's so. It's this. I love this sweater, and I get so many compliments on it. Urban Outfitters. <laughs> and I've never seen another human being wearing it, which doesn't make any sense to me at all. 
That's incredible. Um, what's coming for you guys next? Emma, I know you just launched a book club and you got a lot of projects coming up. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I just launched my book club called Bellatrist. And, and it's so cool because it was an idea my best friend and I had. And it's finally come together. And so um, we launched our Instagram yesterday and our website today. And um, our first book is South and West by Joan Didion. And we actually got an exclusive interview with her. So I was, she's my hero and my favorite writer. So that's been the most exciting thing um, and also different than, than movies and TV. So it's been really cool. Yeah. Read more books, guys. Come on. What's wrong with that? I love that. Please. You guys going to join the book club? I, I, I was just Turns informed it. about the book club, and now I'm top member. <laughs> I'm such a fan. Still waiting for my invitation <laughs> to the book club. I said, all of you, please join the book club. And I think you, you continue talking about something else. Fair enough. <laughs> And, and Lucy, I'm so excited for Murder, Murder on the Orient Express. What was that like filming that, please? Unbelievable. Yeah. That was so much fun. We just wrapped last month. Um, yeah, and, and we had like game night every Friday where we played werewolves, which is the equivalent of mafia. And so to be in a room... For people who don't know who's in this movie, it's Johnny well, Depp. And everybody yeah, and you've so, ever heard of. Well, we'd be in this room and you kind of you would get really competitive with this game and you suddenly realize that you're like in Penelope Cruz's face being like, no, you're the werewolf. And it's like, you know what? Take a step back for a second <laughs> right um but yeah it was so surreal and just getting to watch those people work judy dench yeah. and michelle Pfeiffer, who have grown up watching and uh, it's just surreal who's the best at the board games um josh gad gets pretty into it um yeah and yeah well penelope plays with her husband javier Bardem, who's also there and they don't it's not like a game to them it's like a <laughs> lifestyle so they got pretty pretty intense with it. So jealous of that experience. Um, so we have some <laughs> questions out here in the audience. We're going to start right there. Okay. Hi. Hi um, I know this is a dark movie. And how do you guys get mentally prepared for such a dark role? Emma, you're probably used to it. But like, do you watch <laughs> do you do you watch on another other films or something to get prepared for that role? Yeah. I mean, I think uh, speaking from my experience, it's all about just immersing yourself so far in it that you can't look back. Um, you, you can't, you can't be distracted. Know what I mean? I can't think about, you know, what's for lunch? Well, I'm like, I won't spoil it, but you know, like it's one of the doing things. certain things to certain people. Well, I'm people. doing certain things to certain well, people. Not alone. Well, I'm not alone. Um, hanging out with some friends. And, uh, so yeah, for me, it was just about like really just channeling something that I kind of hadn't before and just staying in the, in the zone. And once you're there, it's, it's easy to get deeper in. Great. Well, okay. next question is right there. Hello. Um, so hi. I'm like, hi. I'm like a huge horror film movie fan, um, and I was just wondering, what's your favorite horror film? Well, we... I think she was looking at you. It's hard to tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we... Oz sent us a whole yeah. list of films to watch to prepare for this, <laughs> and on that list was Rosemary's Baby as one of them, which has become my favorite horror film. I'm such a huge fan of Ruth Gordon anyway, and she's brilliant in that film, and Mia Farrow. And kind of like this film, it's a horror film, but that's so much more than that. So, yeah. Um, I like uh, Don't Look Now. Do you know that one? That's a, oh, that's a good old one. Uh, I like Creature from the Black Lagoon. I like weird things, man. I'm a kind you know. Uh, and I like uh, Eraserhead. David Lynch's Eraserhead. I don't know if that's considered I a horror love Eraserhead. movie. But that's, you told me to watch that's that. That's kind of my favorite movie. And so, and The Shining, you know, that's kind of the best oh, one. Oh, took mine. Sorry. Give me mine, too. Quick, think of something else. You have, like, a few seconds. A few, no, I love The Shining. You know, I, I, love, um, I love The Others. It's great, too. I love The Others. With Nicole Kidman. Some great answers right there. Okay, one last question right here. Hi. Staying on the horror Hi. theme a bit, I'm kind of in film school right now, and I noticed a lot that I like to stay to like the drama narrative and stuff and comedy sometimes, but I'm kind of interested to see what it'd be like writing and acting in horror, so I wanted to know what advice you have for directing and writing horror and what advice you all have for acting in horror. Uh, good, great question, and good luck, by the way. <laughs> Um, uh, for me, horror, for me, the horror genre is really exciting, especially because for two, two things, really. First of all, it deals with everything that's hidden, right? It's everything that we don't know about. And so my advice to you would be to, would be to say, always peel back 
what you're doing. Always hold back what you're doing. Restraint in a horror picture is really kind of where it's at because that's what we're talking about in any horror movie. We're talking about, I don't know what's going to happen to me in my life. Like, I don't know how my life ends. Can we dig that? Like, that's kind of what a horror movie is like. Am I going to, like, is some guy going to do this, this, or this? Or is, how do I end? And so that whole kind of hidden quality is, like, pretty deep, you know? So, like, yeah, I think if you hang out with that quality and, like, hold back, I think it's, uh, I think there's a lot there. I want to hang out with there. you more. That's yeah, that awesome. Cool. Yeah, that was good. That was good, right? That was, wow. I mean, And then I was like, wow. what Talking is myself happening? in the mirror at the hotel oh room, God. just figuring it out. It's like the guy's a writer or something, you know? Yeah, you should, like, do something yeah. with that. <laughs> um, and then there was one other thing I was going to say that was even better. And then I interrupted. And then you interrupted me and <laughs> threw me right off of my game. Really sorry, but uh, sorry. I would say for acting, if you want to think on go it, for it, if you want do to it. think about I would say that for any acting, find the humanity in it, and it makes the emotion you're trying to portray that much better. It makes you that much funnier. It makes you that much sadder. It makes you that much scarier if you can just find the humanity in it. And that, this is the other thing. Yeah, you're, exactly. And the thing I was going to say about horror movies is that unlike other move, un, unlike other genres, horror movies really force presence. They really force the audience to be yeah. like present with what's going to like not in the same way that you are with a period drama or a Pixar movie, both of which are fantastic. No but in a Pixar, Pixar movie, you're not like, you know. But in a horror movie, it really your attention is fixed and your presence is really fixed. So you have you, you get a, you, you can do a lot and use silence also. Don't forget silence. Well, guys, I highly recommend you see The Black Coat's Daughter on the biggest screen with the loudest sound as possible. And one more round of applause for this great crew. March 31st, the movies and theaters. Tell your friends. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you.